You and your fellow adventurers find yourselves in the Dancing Dragon Inn on a cold rainy night as patrons huddle around the huge fiery hearth or hot bowls of mutton stew and mugs of ale. Occasionally, a cheer or toast pierces the otherwise indistinguishable din of conversation. Near the stairs, a young bard tries to compete with all this noise with sweetly sung choruses about bygone ages of heroism. The barkeep is a middle-aged man with an untidy mustache and greasy hair, and he leans over the bar to ask our newcomers, Will it be tonight, friends? As the party orders drinks, you, the bold young fighter of the group, turn around with your mug of ale. You see a hooded figure at a dimly lit table in the corner, and he looks to be eyeing your sword. Hi everyone, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20. This is the Dungeon Master's Journey, a series where we talk about things that matter to Dungeon Masters, from beginners to veterans. For this one, we'll be talking about starting your campaign or game in a tavern or inn. It's an old fantasy trope that goes back to the Prancing Pony in The Lord of the Rings. Actually, if we step out of the modern fantasy genre, it goes all the way back to the 14th century at least. Geoffrey Chaucer, with his adventuring party in Canterbury Tales, if we can call it that, uh, they started in the old Tabard Inn, an actual inn at that time in London. But anyway, in the intro, I described a stereotypical tavern scene for a D&D game. And trust me, I tried to be as painfully stereotypical as possible. And my main point of reference for that is the aforementioned Prancing Pony, although I'm sure there are lots of other inspirations that are lodged back there somewhere in my memory from fantasy novels and RPG sessions. As I listed one played out trope after another, were you rolling your eyes or getting sick to your stomach? Or did you find the familiarity comforting? exciting even, reminding you of things you love about this genre. In this video, I'll first share a cautionary word on using taverns in your game, and then I'll share why I think taverns, inns, pubs, whatever you call them, even though they may feel overdone, are worth including in your game and could make a really good starting point for a campaign. And lastly, we'll talk about how to create really cool taverns, Taverns that can move beyond the trope, or at least put a twist on them. Taverns that can bring your game to life, delighting your players and really immersing them in the world that you hope to build together. If you're of the mind that starting a campaign in a tavern is just too blah, that's totally fine. I don't blame you. Personally, I happen to embrace a lot of the tropes when playing RPGs. I have dwarves in my world that talk with thick Scottish accents. Some of my elves are aloof and isolated. And in my mind, there's nothing wrong with a good old quest to a wizard's tower. These tropes work for me, but I, I completely understand if they don't for you. In my video on improving boring D&D combat from a couple weeks back, I happened to mention a fight with orcs and goblins in my intro. Now, I was trying to be a bit boring in my example, but someone mentioned in the comments that Orcs and goblins are actually banned at their table in favor of more interesting monsters. You see, I love orcs and goblins. I have nothing against them. They're fairly prominent races in my game world, and I'd like to think I'm capable of making them interesting, just as I am with a wide variety of other races and creatures, giving them character and twisting the stereotypes in key ways. But if that's not you and you've written off the starting in a tavern thing, that's totally fine. In my next video in the series, I'm actually going to talk about several other ways to start off your campaign with a bang. Ways that involve nothing resembling a tavern or inn. Now, the cautionary word. Before we get into why taverns are awesome and how you can make them work best, I should admit that while starting in a tavern can be a really good campaign starter, I honestly sometimes prefer to just jump right into the action without any of the loosey-goosey awkwardness that can sometimes come along with tavern scenes. You're trying to figure out who your character is and who these people you're playing with are and what are we doing here again? So there's that. Also, for the brand new DM, a tavern scene can require a lot of prep work or require you to be really good at improv. What if your characters want to order food? What kinds of ale do they serve? What about the bartender's name? How about the server, the patrons? What if they don't want to take the quest from that one NPC and decide to punch him in the face instead? An experienced DM can probably handle all this just fine and can have a lot of fun with it. 
But for a new DM, or a DM who prefers a little more on the rails type of adventure, starting your campaign with the PCs already out on the quest or in media res in the middle of things might work better. I would also urge caution to dungeon masters who are running a one-shot game as opposed to kicking off a campaign. Starting in a tavern can burn valuable time if your hope is to eventually get them out into a dungeon or the wilderness or even over to the thieves guild. This can be especially problematic if you have players who really like to role play and you have limited time to finish the game, like at a convention or a game shop that's going to close in a few hours. It can totally work and it can be a lot of fun, but in a one shot I usually try to keep any tavern scenes very brief and find a way to really control the pace. So a few minutes of role playing in the tavern and then all hell breaks loose or something like that. Alright, now that the cautionary word is out of the way, my friends, taverns are so cool. But why? Why use taverns and inns in your RPG? Why do they work so well as a campaign starter? Most obviously, taverns are places where a wide variety of people gather. People from all walks of life. Literally anybody could be in a tavern because at the end of the day, people want food and drink and maybe a bit of entertainment. So, if you're looking for a place where it would make sense for your party to be before a quest, this is a good place. They can each have their own reason for being there, their own backstory. But a tavern is a natural place where now these backstories, these paths, can converge. Taverns are also places where ale flows and tends to loosen tongues. People are a bit less cautious with what they say, and it's much easier to overhear juicy rumors or maybe to pick up on squabbles or business dealings that are going on in the tavern. In addition, taverns, and more specifically the inns they're often attached to, can also just be plain necessary. Adventurers travel, they explore, they get tired of sleeping on the dirt. So adventurers are likely to need inns. So you might as well embrace that and make them interesting. Now, here's a big one. Taverns should be a microcosm of the wider culture. If you do it right as a game master, your tavern should give your players the feeling of what your world outside the tavern is like. That could be the whole world, because maybe the players are new to this game world and you want to give them a feel for it, or it could be that specific city or district. Use your taverns as a way to communicate the general cultural mood, uh, the values of the people, the politics and recent events, and then you can get all the way down to the nitty-gritty of how people dress, the food they eat, the music they enjoy, how they talk. The last reason taverns are great is because they're just fun. There can be a lot of activity in taverns that can make for a lively scene, and that can be really interesting for players. These are all great reasons to have lots of tavern scenes throughout the course of your campaign. But back to starting in a tavern, a tavern itself, I find, usually isn't enough. I'm sure it would be possible for an entire adventure to take place in a tavern, and that's kind of a cool concept. But still, you're probably hoping that they leave eventually. <laughs> so the questions that you gotta ask are, what are you going to do to forge this party together and then set them off an adventure? And I think those are really two separate questions, but you can get a two for one if you're lucky. For the first question, maybe you actually don't start them off as strangers. Maybe you have a session zero before the game even starts where you create characters together and create some connections between those characters. This character is my cousin, and well, this one, she's the daughter of the blacksmith who made my shield, and you get the idea. But maybe they are all strangers, and that can work out just fine if you have a spark. So here's a classic spark. A fight breaks out. Someone is clearly in the wrong, so the players all fight on the same side, and a bond is forged. Another spark. The PCs overhear a rumor that's just too enticing to ignore. Pretty soon everyone wants it on the action, and they're off. Another spark. Someone bursts in the door and has a desperate need. A terrible thing has happened. Anyone with a heart would certainly help. So they do, and they're off. And lastly, they witness an awful thing in the tavern an abusive husband, or a lord mistreating a servant. Sympathy might draw the players in and cause them to ask questions. And now they're getting wrapped up in something bigger. Those are just a few ideas for how you can take things from, yay, we're in a tavern, this is fun, to we're a party of adventurers and what we do matters. All right, now that we've talked about why taverns are awesome, let's actually get down to the nitty gritty of making your own taverns. Firstly, let me say that maybe it's not a tavern per se. 
Think about what other sorts of public places people might gather in. It could be a tea house, a bath house, a coffee shop, a bakery. Don't be afraid to color outside the lines a bit with these. But back to the tavern. Firstly, there's a really cool supplement that I got a review copy of that I highly recommend people checking out. It's called Remarkable Inns and Their Drinks, and it's on Drive-Thru RPG. It was a bestseller for quite a while, so you might have seen it before. It's also on sale at the moment for under $7 for the PDF, so definitely go check it out. There's also a great episode of the podcast, Roll Up and Die, all about taverns, and I also recommend you check that out. There's links to both of these things down in the video description. So when thinking of a tavern, I sometimes like to start with a cool name. Going with adjective noun or ing verb noun is a common way to do this. Some examples, the, the prancing pony, the dancing dragon from the intro, very tropey, I know. The blue shield, the copper well, the bright bell, the fallen gate, the singing sparrow, the red falcon, the changing wind. That last one has led to some pretty good fart jokes at one of my games, so be careful with that. Or maybe it's a possessive name, like the knight's folly, the brigand's blade, the gull's nest, the victor's prize. Or feel free to deviate from these formulas and maybe you go look at real bars and restaurants in your area and take some inspiration from them. After a name, we need a look. Is it a squat brick building? Is it an old guard house that's been retired? I recommend giving it some unique characteristics. The Fallen Gate Tavern in the ruined city of Belsara in my world was recently constructed partly out of the old rusty city gates that were knocked down centuries ago in some war. Most of the city is still in ruins, but a small ragtag bunch are rebuilding and reclaiming the city, salvaging what they can. So what makes your taverns look unique? Is it painted bright red? Does it have a beautifully lush rooftop garden? Bright copper double doors? Or is it just absolutely grimy and falling apart? Maybe the location makes it unique. Is it spanning a river or built into the hillside or maybe partly underwater? After a look, we need an owner. The owner could be an innkeeper or the barkeep. Think of who this person is. Now, I, I always recommend not over planning your NPCs. You don't need a full character sheet or stat block. Come up with a name, disposition, and a tad bit of backstory. Try to veer away from the stereotypes with your owner. Perhaps the owner is a former mayor. Perhaps it's the widow of a well-known hero who died. Maybe it's a young halfling entrepreneur who's new to the area. Just because a tavern is a bit of a trope doesn't mean you need to follow all the tropes. Just like we tried with the look of the tavern, make it unique. Do the same thing you did with the barkeep for a couple other NPCs, maybe a barmaid and a couple notable patrons. If an actual fight breaks out and you end up needing stats, I usually just make up an attack bonus and hit points on the spot and go, but you can always grab a monster manual and find the commoner stat block. With the owner and patrons, just placing a couple people that you can draw attention to can really help bring the place to life and keep it from becoming a situation where the players ask about what they can see and who's there, and you end up saying something like, um, you know, like regular tavern goers. You don't want that. Lastly, we need to figure out a menu. Now, I recommend coming up with just a couple items. Most inns in traditional medieval fantasy wouldn't have a lot of options, and they probably won't have physical menus that they actually hand to people. So just come up with a couple of dishes, an appetizer, a soup, and maybe a main dish or two. A couple kinds of ale or wine. That all should be good enough. This doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you can totally go nuts with it and get really, really creative and unique. Food or drinks could even have temporary impact on your stats, whether it buffs your character's strength or maybe it hurts their constitution. So a name, a unique look or location, an owner and other NPCs, and a menu. Those are some of the basic building blocks of taverns that I usually go for, but you could go way more in depth and your game will be richer for it. Think about the pricing. Does it cater to the wealthy or the middle class? Think about the dispositions towards certain races or types of people. What about the decorations and furniture? Uh, what sorts of rooms does the inn have? How many? What's the price per night? What sorts of rumors might the party hear in this tavern? What are the words to the song the bard is singing? The nice thing is you can keep building your inns and taverns over time. Don't go nuts all at once. I don't recommend doing that with anything in dungeon mastering. 
but they can be these recurring locations that you can keep adding to and keep bringing more and more to life. Now before we go, I would really love to hear about your taverns. If you're a dungeon master and you've built a tavern that you thought was just really, really cool, I'd love to hear about it. What have your players latched onto? What have they really liked? Or if you're a player, what's one your dungeon masters made that you thought was just an awesome place? Or what are some inns or taverns or tavern-like locations from popular works of fiction, movies or books that you really like? Remember, as I said at the beginning, next time I'll be talking about other ways you can start your campaign off with a bang that do not involve taverns or inns. So I would also love to hear your ideas on that. I have got a lot of ideas already written down, but if you want to put some of yours down in the comments below, and maybe you even upvote some of the ones you like best, perhaps I'll include some of yours, and of course I'll give you credit, in the next video as well. Lastly, if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really love it if you could give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe down below. Share this video with all your Dungeon Master friends, I would greatly appreciate it. And before I go, I just want to say a huge thank you to my patrons. Patrons are people who give a little bit of money on a monthly basis, and it all helps to make this happen here at WASD20. So thank you so much to these people. I greatly appreciate it. And you too can join with them. There's a Patreon link in the video description. All right, that's all for this one, everybody. Dungeon Masters, keep on rocking it. Everybody take care. You'll see me again very soon.